are, what they really feel, what they really want to do with their lives, they've got a mask. And it's a mask that says, this is not really me, but this is what I think is acceptable to everyone else, so I can occupy the hassle-free zone. And for, for me anyway, it's that war in the psyche between that part of us that I call I am me, I am free, that wants to flow with our uniqueness. The war between that and the part of our psyche I call, oh my God, which is at the heart of emotional, mental and therefore physical dis-ease in the world. And what it's also created is a mass schizophrenia. Because not only are we slaves to impose thought and behavior as a human race, we're also the police force of all the other slaves. And hilarious, really. When you're on the edge of the hassle-free zone and you are thinking, if I go any further in what I say and do, even though I think it's right, I'm going to meet hassle for being different. You're not standing there thinking, if I do go any further, what will Bill Clinton think of me? What, what about... What about the Prime Minister of Britain? What will he say? Uh, and the Governor of the Bank of England? Uh, we're not saying that. What we're saying at that point, shall I, shan't I express my uniqueness and evacuate hassle-free zone, we're saying, what will my mother think? What about the neighbours? Oh, what about the blokes down the pub? Oh my God! In other words, what will the other slaves to impose thought and behavior think about me escaping from it? We police each other. It's like having um, a cell full of prisoners and, and once one of the prisoners finds a means of escape, it's all the other prisoners that run to block the exit. We are both the slaves, the prisoners to this imposition and the police force of it because everyone seems to be trying to tell everyone else what is right and wrong, what is moral and immoral, what's right for them, what they should do, what they must do, what they ought to do. And as a result of that, we're actually manipulating each other without realizing it. And within this hassle-free zone, Tremendous uh, manipulation and indoctrination goes on. This hassle-free zone you could describe as the public arena. And if you look at the media, what is the media? The media is the collective police force of the hassle-free zone for anyone who steps out of it in public. People think, you know, when you say the media is controlled and the media is part of this manipulation but you must therefore be saying that there is a manipulator in every newsroom all over the world standing behind journalists saying no no can't write that you changed that this is what I'm telling you you write that okay that's fine you don't need all that once the structure the mindset is there then the media just does it without manipulation although there are key people like media owners and stuff that are certainly kind of involved in what I'm going to talk about tonight, but in general, what does the media do? It defends and uses as its point of reference from which it judges everyone and everything the norm in society. In other words, what the hassle-free zone says is reality. Example, a few centuries ago, if we'd have had today's media, they would have dismissed as mad or condemned as bad anyone who said the earth was a sphere was round because the hassle-free zones version of reality at that time was that it was flat once that uh, reality flipped through weight of evidence and the hassle-free zone norm became the earth is actually a sphere suddenly anyone who said the earth was flat was now off their rocker so anyone, at any time, in the public eye, who says or acts in ways that are outside of society's norm at that time, 
is immediately jumped on by the media as mad or bad because their reference point for sanity and reality is whatever the norm is. And there are, there are several key mind manipulation techniques which um, are very, very powerful uh, propaganda tools. The most effective and the most powerful, and it's used on us all the time, is something I call problem, reaction, solution. It's a cracker, this one. It's a mind manipulation technique that avoids not only opposition to what is the goal of the manipulators, it actually manipulates people to demand they do what they want to do anyway. And it's happening all the time. I, once you see this technique and how it works, you watch the news and read the newspapers in a completely different light because you start to see it happening. It works like this. You start by secretly creating a problem in the world and making sure someone else is blamed for it in the public uh, arena, in the public mind. It could be a run on a currency, it could be a government collapse. At its most extreme, it could be a war. Because the two world wars in this century were funded, all sides were funded by the same people. Provable. The same people that funded the Allies in the Second World War and funded... Uh, the Soviet Union also funded Hitler through loans from America known as the Young Plan and the Doors Plan and also via the German subsidiaries of American multinational companies. Why would they do that? Why would someone want to fund all sides in a war? What is good is a war? Well, first of all, on one level, it makes vast amounts of money if you're lending money to all sides and you're also... Um, selling them lots of arms and all that stuff, but the fundamental reason for a war is to change the nature of post-war society. And what we saw in the First World War and the Second World War were massive global examples of problem-reaction-solution, which worked like this. The problems created secretly. You then use the media, which isn't difficult, to wind up public opinion in relation to your manufactured problem to the point where public opinion utters the classic words something must be done, this can't go on which is always, always followed by give my power away, what are they going to do about it? And at that point, those who created the problem and got someone else to be blamed for it wound up that public reaction, then openly, in the public arena, in the parliaments of the world, uh, on the, in the newspapers and on the television, offer the solutions to the problems they have created. And in doing so, they get vast numbers of people to demand what they want to do anyway. Uh, for instance, if, um, if you want more cameras in the streets. Crikey, they're going up all over the place in Britain. If you want more cameras in the streets, you want a more armed police force, you want more authoritarian laws, greater erosions of freedom, and you want the public to demand you do it, then get the public frightened of crime. Either let um, society break down so there is more crime, or emphasize crime to be worse than it really is in some areas. Get people frightened, and the first thing people do when they're in fear about something is they look for someone out there to protect them from what they're frightened of. So, get people frightened that they're going to be burgled, get people frightened they're going to be mugged in the street, and they'll demand you take the freedoms away. They'll demand cameras in the streets and more authoritarian laws. I, was, uh, I turned on the BBC radio, Radio 5, uh, last year, and they had an item on cameras in the streets, because they're going up everywhere, these things, you know. You want money for homeless people? Oh, the economy's not too good, you know, you know, you have to wait for these things. You want cameras in the street? They'll write the check. And this guy, he was from a council in uh, East Anglia, Norfolk, I reckon. And he said, um, to be honest, he said, um, crime rates in our area don't justify cameras in the streets. He said, but our people think they do, so we're putting them up to make them feel better. Problem, reaction, solution. And we have a very topical example of that in the last few years. Bosnia. The goal of this manipulation, and has been for a very long time, is to get the world population or that majority of it anyway, to see as a good idea or the only option in given circumstances